G'day guys and welcome back to Supercoach with DR. Now for today, we're going to do a player video. And I'm going to try to look at a few of the pods, particularly in our midfield. And the first player we're going to have a look at is Elliot Yo from the West Coast Eagles. I think I've mentioned in previous videos, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Yo being a, a Brisbane supporter, obviously, and one of the go-home five, but has played really, really well during his time at the Eagles and can be a really, really damaging player. So he's affectionately nicknamed the Yo-Yo by many people in the Supercoach community. I remember early in 2018, I think he dropped to 27, 2017, you know, consecutive rounds, whereas I've got it here, 83, 141, 59, and a 150. So that's why he was known as a Yo-Yo, but uh, actually had a pretty consistent year uh, last year in, in 2019. He isn't a really high possession player, and he rarely touched a ball more than 30 times a game, and he doesn't average a lot of goals. I think it's about half a goal a game. But as I said, he can be a really damaging player. So let's have a quick look at some of the stats here. Uh, basically identical averages in 2018, 2019. As we can see there, very durable player. Doesn't miss too many matches. Um, but he hasn't really um, gone into that elite bracket of scoring mids. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd love him to get, you know, 115 average. That would be terrific. Can he do it this year? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see, but let's crunch some of the numbers anyway. Now, with Yo, th there really are some magic numbers. So if he gets 26 possessions or above, he hits a ton. He did that seven out of eight times when he went 26 or above in the disposal column. If he averages five tackles or below, he won't reach 100. And that happened one time out of nine games that he reached 100 when he didn't have more than five tackles. So that's one thing to note. If he goes over five in the tackle count, he'll pretty much get 100. Now, if Yo does reach the ton, he goes at 114 and at, at an absolute minimum. There's no scores between 98 and 114. And he's got 12 scores of 114 plus. So Look here, 141, 114, 128, 14, 16, 142, 15, 36, 15, 32, 16, and 14. He, he doesn't get those low hundreds, you know, that 100, 105 even. If he goes above the ton, then he'll at least go at 114 plus, which is terrific. You know, if he could consistently get around that 114 as an average, He'd be a terrific pick. I looked at, uh, you know, losing games. They lost seven games last year, the Eagles, and I'm including finals with this as well, the semi-final and, and the Elim final there, as you can see. At a, three out of the seven losses, he went over 116. And then the other four losses, he went below 100. So it's a, it's a pretty even split with Yo there. So if they're losing, it doesn't seem to worry him too much. He still scores, well, you know, in half those games at least, as we said, over the 116. So he's a bit of a pod at the moment. Where are we? 4% uh, of sides. So you compare that to some of the other selections here. Gaff's even cheaper than him. May have a, a close look at Gaff. There was someone in the comments section the other day that had Gaff in the side, or it might have been on another team that I was, I was rating or reviewing. And I was really interested with the pick, and he put a really good case forward. Um, so I'll have to go back on that and take a look at what that poster said and, and give him a bit of a shout-out and possibly do a video on, on Gaff as well. But yeah, if we look at the percentages owned, uh, 4%, 1461. Yeah, so really at the moment, he's he really is a fair pod there out of those, you know, sort of elite bracket of mids. Not the, the uber premiums, but it's sort of, you know, on that next level of mids. Um, we can see some like a bulk there. I don't think too many will consider him Zorko. Well, if you take a look, actually, yeah, there's not many people that are looking... At this stage, uh, anyone sort of under Yo, which is 14, Tim Kelly. So another one from West Coast. I'll have to do one on him as well. I might look to do possibly a little bit of a West Coast review. We'll, we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, with Elliot Yo, as I said, there, there really are some, some magic numbers with him. All the things that I just mentioned before. You know, the tackle count is another big thing. Look, he's got some, some great tackle, but... Another, I suppose this is just an outlier, is, you know, a 94 with 11 tackles, but, you know, only got the 16 possessions there. Um, and here, the tackle count, only had two. He went over the ton, but if we look over at the disposal column, 
he got his season high for disposals with 30 there. As we said, he, he really doesn't go 30 and above. He only did that once last year. Now, will I select Elliot Yo? I don't think so. I've got some other midfielders in mind. But if I was to select him, I'd need to ask a couple of questions. What are those questions? So the first one is, how is he going to improve on his average? Last two years, we can see this going 107, 107. You know, we'll round it up to 108. And for me, that's not good enough for one of our eight midfielders. You know, I want to have those guys that at, a, at an absolute bare minimum are going 110 average, hopefully pushing that 115. That might be asking a lot to have eight guys over the 115 average, but that's certainly my goal, I think. So the other question we've got to ask ourselves, apart from, you know, how Yo is going to improve on that average, is what effect Tim Kelly's acquisition is going to have on Elliot Yo's scoring. I think we also need to delve a little bit deeper into that. So how is he going to bump up this average? Well, if you look at the numbers in, in 2019, I've already crunched some of them, but probably for me, if he can make an impact on the scoreboard, I think that would go a long way to boosting that average. And if we look at the goal assists as well, the most he had was, was three there. We can see a big stretch here where he didn't have a goal assist. That may have been due to a role. You know, if, if they are playing him back, then you can't expect him to have too many of those. But I'd love to see him push forward a little bit more. We obviously want him playing the majority of the time in the midfield. That's a given. But I'd love to see him spend a little bit more time forward. I think that could really help his scoring if he can make a, a bit more of an impact possibly there on the scoreboard as well. We'll look at his kick to handball ratio. Um, so he's kicking it more. Yeah, certainly likes to kick the ball a lot more, which is certainly a good thing. Uh, definitely a good thing there. Um, can he, you know, push towards 30 on more occasions? That would be terrific if he could do that. But there's nothing else that really, really stands out for me. It looks like here, actually, if you do look at the, the numbers here, the rebound 50s, he's got a few more of those there rather than the, the goal assists. So he may have been playing more of a back roll during that time. Uh, if you look at the numbers there, that's just an educated guess. I'm, I'm really not too sure. I haven't gone back and watched Vision or, or done anything like that. It's just sort of looking at the numbers there. Um, so Elliot Yo, how is he going to improve? It's a, it's a tough question. Um, and as I said, with the acquisition of Tim Kelly... I don't think that that's going to help him to improve a lot, but will it affect him that much? You look at the doggies and we've got McRae, Bontempelli and Dunkley, and we all know how they averaged last year. So just because you've got a star-studded midfield, it doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to take points off each other. But what I am saying is with Kelly coming in, I don't see how it helps you. Sometimes the acquisition of a new player maybe a benefit to another player. It might be not just in the midfield, might be down back, might be down forward, could be anywhere on the ground. But I don't see how it's going to help his scoring. Do I think it's going to have a really negative impact? I don't think so because I think Yo's best position is in the midfield. But will it allow him to maybe spend a bit more time in defence, spend a bit more time up forward? I suppose the advantage with Yo. Uh, you know, from a coach's perspective, is that you can use him in a number of different roles, up, forward, down, back, and obviously through the midfield, where I think, you know, obviously his best position. But uh, with Yo and Kelly, uh, look, you've also got to take into account Shoeys, Gaffs, Reddens. There should be some other guys that will also go through there at times as well. We do need to take into account all those players. Uh, but I don't think that, that with Yo, he's going to go massively backwards, this year with his 107 average, but I don't think that he's going to take any giant leaps. So given that fact, I think that I won't be selecting him, where I know pretty much at this stage that I won't be selecting him. Would I recommend him as a pod? He, he could be a great pod, you know, only in 4% of sides as we saw there at the moment. So if you're looking at a point of difference, Elliot Yo could be a man, but uh, I, I might in the next video have a look at Tim Kelly and crunch some of his numbers. And it may be a decision for some people between a Yo, a Kelly. Would people select a Gaff? Here's another option at West Coast. There's a few 
pods there. I don't think any of them will be really highly selected. We saw Tim Kelly. I think he was about 14%. But I don't know how much higher that will get as the preseason gets along and we get a bit closer to round one. So thanks, guys. Let me know what your thoughts on Elliot Yo are. I'm not a massive, massive fan, uh, as I don't think he can really improve that average. But look, he's probably coming into the peak of his powers. West Coast are going to be a really, really strong side. If a fit Nick Nat is tapping it down to Yo, that's always a good thing for his clearance count. And if you can keep up, you know, those high tackle, that high tackle rate, then that will also go a long way to ensuring that he uh, hopefully boosts that average up a little bit. So thanks again for watching, guys. Appreciate all the support, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.